Alright guys, so my Rocket Bunny kit is finally in now. Gotta unload it, put it in the uh, my spare shed and unbox it and this is gonna be the beginning of a full unboxing and installing of a Rocket Bunny kit on a 350Z drift car. Let's get to it. Alright guys, so there you go, that is the full Rocket Bunny um, body kit for the 350Z being unboxed. Um, yeah, so now just going to have free where you can, get it installed and then off to getting the car fully wrapped. So, you guys see us installing this in the next clip. Alright guys, so this is the beginning of the full Rocket Bunny installation on the 350Z. Uh, so the plan is I'm going to quickly bring it outside, going to get some photos, get some videos of it before it goes for its big transformation, so let's get to it. Alright guys, so just quickly, I'm going to be recording most of this video on a Canon 700D. It's my first time using a DSLR for videoing, so the videos might be out of focus, blurry, blah blah blah, blah. so this is going to be really me testing it. Um, so the first things first, I've got it up on the wood blocks, and what I'm going to do is, is start installing the front bumper. While I've got the front bumper off I'm gonna jack the car up gonna undo the front wheels so I can get the inner wheel well out that plastic part out so when it comes to installing the fenders it's just straight into the fenders don't have to worry about jacking it up and doing that crap so So you can see here, the only real dodgy fitment is just here, um, that's because it's potting me out on the headlight, so I'm actually not going to adjust anything here until I've cut my fender. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is, is put the bolt holes up here, so I can put these clips back in. Alright, I'm kind of going back on what I said, so I was actually just going to leave this until I have the fender, but it actually can meet. So what I'm actually going to do is 
take the wheel off, get the wheel wheel out, take all the clips behind it, and I do have to trim some of this bumper. I'll show you when the wheel and it's off. So it's da -da -da. I'll show you where I need to trim as it's hitting. I don't know if you can see the little blue bracket right there. It's stopping on that. So yeah, jack the car up and go from there. Alright, so now those clips are out of the way, hopefully the bumper can fit in better. Now this is that uh, blue bracket I was talking about where the um, bumper is hitting at the moment. Alright, so with a little bit of fire link around this headlight, so it's getting caught kind of here and along the bottom there, I've actually been able to close that gap and if I do push it up, it actually is closing. So, same this other side here, you can literally see there's no gap, so I'm going to have to keep sanding all through there so I can close that gap there. Um, it's getting there and it's looking pretty cool. Alright guys, I'm happy to say that the front bumper is on. You can see when I push it up, there's actually no gap anymore. In the resting position, there's literally like 3 mil gap. That side, over here, there's a little bit more. But then you can actually really squish it up so it's flush. Um, there's kind of not much of a gap around the headlight, so I might just take a little bit more out. Um, but now I'm going to move on to taking the side skirts off and yeah, we'll take it from there. Alright, so these are the side skirts. Obviously the white one's the Rocket Bunny and the blue one's the original. Um, the real difference is, is that uh, the OEM is like nothing here where the Rocket Bunny actually has a line which will match the rear fender. Guys, so what we've done is we've just marked out the holes we're going to drill for the canard. So we went in 15mm on that one and then 105mm for the rest. Just using these wood screws, going to pre-drill these, hold it up, mark it on the bumper and then drill them in. So let's do it. Alright, so today's plan is guys, we're going to be doing the front Rocket Bunny fenders. Um, going to be starting for me on the driver's side, and then we're going to record us doing the passenger side so we actually know what we're doing. So, yeah, I will show you the tools that we're going to be using. This is my first time ever doing anything like a wide body on a car. Uh, I've done the front bumper, we've got the canards on, which was really simple, it was literally just four holes for the bumper and then like six or seven holes for the canard so that was it so now it's cutting into the fender which is a different story for uh, my dad and I so yeah like I said we're going to start with the uh, driver side first and we're going to come over to the passenger side record it all for you guys so let's get to it all right so we have the first fender taped and marked so what we've done is on the front part there we're leaving that support in and we just literally come 10 mil off of that to that point. On the other side, I'll give you all the measurements and how we've done it. I've left a bit of meat up here so there's still a bit of strength when we pot rivet up there. I've come all the way out here so when the, the three vents on the Rocker Bunny, you can see straight through. Come down on the angle and that's right where the side skirt literally begin. So yeah, got to cut it all off now.
Alright guys, so there you go, that's the first uh, for me the driver's side Rocket Bunny fender on. That took about two hours. Um, I was obviously trying to find a few tools here and there, but to be honest, it was actually a fairly simple, easy install. The fitment is really good. I'll quickly show you again on the front bumper and the fitment down the side. So yeah, that was way easier than I thought. So let's jump onto the passenger side, and this time I'm going to do full in-depth on measurements for where to cut and obviously drill sizes and everything I'm using. So yeah, let's get to it. Alright guys, so this is going to be like my measurements. Obviously everyone is completely different when they uh, obviously cut the fender. So starting at the front of the fender, from that corner to my first cut is 160mm. And then we're just following just up here right to that corner. So we're measuring from the corner of the fender to literally the beginning of a straight line is 50mm from the corner of the headlight, sorry. So there's 50mm. From the crease line, if I can try and focus the wrong way. From the crease line there to our straight line, it's going to be 90 mil, and that's the whole way down here as well. So crease line 90, and again right here is crease line 90. This corner part here is all personal preference. Some people go straight out to a 90 degree bend. I'm doing a 45, so I've still got a little bit more strength up here. So I haven't given you that measurement. Here is 60 mil from our straight line down to the crease of the door. Now you can actually see the crease through here as well. That's where we're gonna be giving that 60 mil. To the indicator recess, it's probably about a five mil gap that we just started line. But again, with 60 mil from the crease of the door here, 60 mil in, and again, this is all personal preference. The side skirts that came on body kit and right there. So you can see I'm cutting that much off and I'm just going straight up. Everyone's different with how they do all their fenders. That's how I'm doing it, and they're the measurements. So yeah, let's get to cutting. All right, so before I cut, I'm just gonna explain one more thing. On the fenders, there is a bracket that holds it to the headlight, and that gives you the strength. I have come, as you can see, about 10 mil off of it, so I've still got this bracket here. Um, it gets pretty thin, and the fender actually still has a lot of movement in it so try and keep as much of the bracket here so you have all the strength in it so yeah there you go Alright, so there you go, cut has been done, I'm just going to go through with the file and just clean up all the edges so it's uh, not sharp in case you catch your hand on it. Alright, so there you go, we've just pilot drilled the um, Rocket Bunny fender as well as the fender um, in place. You saw we put the pot rivets to hold in position so we could get that door gap pretty spot on. What I'm doing now is drilling 9mm holes uh, for the rivnuts. So yeah, let's get them all drilled out. 
All right, so now that we're all drilled out to 9mm, I'm just going to get some primer and then primer the holes. But first, what I'm going to do is, is use a bigger drill bit to smooth out the uh, holes and then primer the holes and then primer that, obviously, the lip that we uh, cut off. That way it protects it from rusting as I don't want it to rust. So, yeah, let's do it. All right, guys, all the rivet nuts are on. We've just test fitted the screws, make sure that they were still obviously good enough for the screwing. So now we just got to chuck the fan drum. Alright, so we are on to doing the rear fenders. Um, this is a very tight, awkward fender. What we're going to do is, is do four bolt holes at the back here, put the rivet nut in and bolt it down tight. Um, as you can see, there's a massive gap in the fuel cap and over here it's a fair whack out, so going to have to, yeah, bolt the back end down. Then we're going to put this in position, bolt it, rivet nut it, and then do the rest. We're not going to cut the fender until it's on, so yeah, let's get to it. Alright, so we've got it mocked up. We've got that pretty good there. That's actually really nice there. You can see on the fuel cap, it just comes in literally there, so I'm going to have to file that out. But the part that we were struggling with was getting this fitment. Now, we can actually push it down and get it about there so it's about what's that 10 mil gap which doesn't bother me at all this fender was very hard to get lined up so 10 mil gap on a drift car that's nothing there all right the fender is all bolted up um fitment wise down there you can see it's a little bit off but like you said we had to really kind of stretch it and push it out being fiberglass you don't want to put too much pressure on it fuel cap as you can see is a bit dodgy but i'm just going to trim it uh, yeah, trim it through there. Got to trim the inside of that out and around. Um, bit of a gap here, but I'll work something out. But otherwise, you can see that we've lined that up pretty good with it. It's just pulling the plastic bone free out. And bottom there, that ring's a little bit squished, but yeah, so rear fender done. So next thing's going to be cutting the fender out. I'm going to stick tape. Um, why the fender's bolted in now and then draw around it all right so we have it all marked out ready to cut um, there is a bolt uh, that's right here but we're cutting that off um, which holds the rear bumper as there'll be a bolt at the bottom and I've also got my two pot rivets that hold the fender on there as well so just going to be following this line again this is literally personal preference on how you want to cut it it's a drift car less weight the better Alright guys, so we have obviously cut it off, um, we've put them in, I kind of sectioned them before I put them in like two, so you can see how one cut goes right deep and then another cut is literally just to the uh, fender, so it's just enough just to fold and 
folded over so when I sectioned it I hammered it up um, and then I've split them in two so we can pot rivet them to the actual fender itself uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out first time doing that so yeah just gonna put some primer on it now so it doesn't rust and yeah we'll pot rivet it to the fender alright guys so it is all pot riveted to the fender and I'm actually pretty happy with how it's turned out um, what I'm gonna do now is get some sicker flex and Sick of flex all on the inside of it between the gaps, and I'm gonna sick of flex on the outside. It's water resistant, and yeah, hopefully, it stops it from rusting as well. So, yes, yeah, pretty happy with how that actually turned out. All right, so there you go. I've just like done the first layer of sick of flex on the outside and the inside. Still a few more holes that need to get patched up, but when it's dry, hopefully, it can stick to a bit better um very happy with actually how it's turned out so just going to put the wheel on and get it off the jack because it's that sort on at the moment wait for it to dry and i'll uh, do another layer of sikaflex so yeah all right guys so that is the last fender for the rocket bunny kit installed um yeah I, um <clears throat> as i was driving out i ran over the Fender. This is fiberglass and I'm actually surprised it didn't break. So, yep, pretty happy with that. Car looks flipping aggressive as hell. Um, so what I have done on that side, I'm running a two inch spacer. So you can see it kind of just feels a guard. Could probably do maybe another inch. And then this side is your OEM, which looks absolute terrible so yeah might park in my drive and do a walk around Alright, so I've got the front bumper, it's all mounted up. All I'm doing is putting a cable tie um, between the metal of the fender and then obviously the fiberglass front bumper. So that's all done. Um, that's the only thing that I've really spotted wrong with this kit. But to be honest, it was a lot cheaper than a proper original Rocket Bunny. So I'm pretty happy if that's all it is. Next thing, we're going to be cutting out the circle for the fuel tank so we're gonna get the Dremel ready and cut it all out Alright guys, so fitment on all the panels are where I want it to be. I just finished doing the fuel cap, that opens and closes, front bumper sorted, the um, what's that for me, the passenger or the right rear fender, per fitment on that was perfect, so I'm going to take my car out, I'm going to pressure clean the outside, then take all the panels off, I'm going to degrease, or use this stuff I've got, simple green, all the inside of the front fenders um, as I'm going to be painting it black so when you see through when you see through that meshing I don't know if you can see in the camera but instead of it being like that white blue colour it will all be black and that is the rear fender alright guys so my next step is going to be painting the inside of all this black um, so I'm going to be masking it up obviously so I don't get any paint over anything I don't want um, then when that's masked and I've got primer on it I'm going to start um, hand sanding all the inside of the fuel cap from where I've had to cut away to get the fuel cap to open so gonna be doing two things at once um, yeah let's get to it alright all masked up I'm just now gonna get some sandpaper rough it up so the primer's got something to stick to Right, so there you go, all painted black. 
um, that turned out way better than I actually thought. So yeah, let's start these uh, saw skirts. Alright guys, one side is all officially done. guys today's the day we're going to be dropping my drift car off to go get vinyl wrapped uh, so I'm gonna do a quick walk around show you guys what it looks like now then when we get get it back from being wrapped uh, I'll do another walk around so you can see how cool the wrap is actually gonna be so yeah let's do it wrap is done it looks absolutely insane gonna get some footage around the car for you guys so you can see what it looks like So there you go, that is the full Rocket Bunny install, plus my livery. Um, yeah, that's it. Literally, the car from when I brought it stock to right now is complete. Next thing to do is motor, which still not sure what way I'm going, but I'll figure it out. Um, yeah, so next video, guys, we'll be down at Matsuri Drifton as we've changed the car heaps again. Got stiffer sway bars lowered and stiffer springs in the back change the alignment a little bit running different tires everything so yeah i'll uh, catch you guys moving down to matsuri